In this video, we will discuss the creation and termination of processes. Any process that is created is created by its parent. So a parent process can create a single child process or multiple children processes. And each child in turn can create other processes forming a tree. So if this was the parent, suppose it has created two children and each child can in turn create another process. So if this is the parent of process P1 and P2, then P1 will become the parent of process P3. So in this way, a tree of processes can be created. Each process that is created is given a unique number by the operating system which is known as the process identifier or the PID and the process is identified and managed in the computer system using this process identifier. So once a process has been created and we know that they, the process that has been created in a UNIX system is a identical copy of its parent. So if this is the parent and a child process has been created, this child will be an identical copy having the same set of instructions as the parent. The parent creates this process by using the fork system call. So the fork system call is used by the parent and the operating system will create this new process, the child process. For how the fork system call works, please check my video on the system calls to see this system call working in detail. So what are the address space options when a child is created? So when the child is created, we know that it has the same set of instruction. It is a duplicate copy. So it can continue being a duplicate of the parent. That is one option. The other option is that the child after being created will load a new program. So whatever were the instructions of the parent process, they will be replaced by the new program which is loaded by the child process. What are the execution options? Now that the parent process has created a child or multiple children, the parent and the children these processes that they can execute concurrently. That is one option. That means the parent is also executing and the children are also executing concurrently. The other option is that after creating its children, the parent will wait for the children to terminate. And only after the child or the children have terminated, then the parent will resume its execution. So this is another execution option. What are the resource sharing options? Either the first option is that whatever are the resources of the parent and by resources they could be the input output resources, the memory, the open files uh, and uh, the other uh, locks that are being used by the parents, the semaphores. So either the children, they will share all the resources being used by the parent. The other option is that the children will be using only a subset of the resources of the parent. And there is a third option that the parent and child will share no resources. As I just said, the fork system call is used to create a new process. Once a new process has been created, the new process or the child process can use the exec system call to replace its memory space with a new program. And wait is a system call used by the parent process to wait for the child to terminate. For all these three system calls, you can check my video on system calls which explains these in detail. So earlier we had the parent process which called the fork system call. This fork system call returns the process ID which is different for the child and different for the parent. If the PID is 
greater than 0 that means this is the parent process and if the PID is 0 that means this is the child process. Here to the parent the child PID is returned. The PID of the child is returned because the fork is creating a child. So the, chi the PID of the child is created sent back to the parent and this is greater than 0. To the child a process ID of a, a return value of 0 is returned. So here this is the child process. The child process can replace its address space by calling a new program or if it wants it can continue to be a duplicate of the parent program. In that case it will not call exec. So if it has called exec then that means a new program is being created. After that program has run the child will then exit. The parent process after creating the child will wait for the child to terminate. So when the child terminates or exits the parent will resume. If the child is not waiting, if the parent is not waiting for the child then it will parent run concurrently with the child then it will not wait. So then the parent and the child will run concurrently in the system. What about process termination? After the process has executed its last statement, it will request the OS to delete it by using the exit system call. So this system call will be a signal to the operating system that the process wishes to be deleted from the system. It will also send a status data to its parent. So this process which is terminating will send a status or a return value to the parent. The parent was waiting via the wait system call. So suppose if this was the parent and it had a child which was running, now the child wants to terminate so it has given an exit system call. On exiting it will send some status data to the parent which was waiting for the child. Now the process which is being terminated say let us see this process is being terminated whatever were the resources allocated to it they will now be deallocated by the operating system. However its entry in the process table so there is a structure data structure being maintained which is called the process table. We will discuss more on this later. Its entry in the process table will remain until the parent calls wait because the process table contains the process's exit status. So if the parent has called wait and the status has been returned then its entry in the process table will be deleted. However, if the parent has not called on wait Till that time the state the return status has been taken care of the its entry in the process table will remain. The parent may also terminate the execution of its child process by using the abort system call. So any parent which has created a child it can terminate the children by using this abort system call and in what scenarios will the process terminate its children if the child has exceeded the allocated resources or the task that was assigned to the child is no longer required or the third reason is that since the parent is exiting that means the parent is terminating so sometimes the operating system might not allow a child to continue if its parent terminates. So in that case the child will also be terminated. So if the OS does not allow a child to exist if its parent has terminated, in that case if a process terminates then all children must be terminated. So if this was a process P1 which had multiple children P2 and P3 and these in turn also had created some children 
then if this process terminates all these processes the children and the grandchildren will be terminated if the OS does not allow the children to exist. This is known as cascading termination. Now we have seen earlier that the parent process may wait for the termination of a child process by using the wait system call and the status information of the child will be returned to the parent process. So if this is the command instruction being used by the parent then whatever is the status of the child which is being returned by the child when it terminates it will be received by the process. Now if a process terminated but there was no parent waiting so suppose the parent did not use this wait system call this wait instruction was not being used by the parent and now the child has terminated now it cannot return its status information to any waiting process that means in that case that child or that child process is known as a zombie so suppose in this case when we had a tree of processes like this suppose we had a parent process p1 and a child process p2 when p1 created p2 let's say p2 is running but p1 has not waited for the child p1 is not waiting for the child so when p2 terminates it does not know where to return the status information because the parent is not waiting for it in that case this process will become a zombie there is another uh, situation where the parent terminated without invoking wait now suppose p2 was still running p2 was running the child process is running and p1 did not use wait and it was running concurrently with the child of course and now p1 has terminated using the exit system call so p1 has terminated the child process is still in the system if the os is allowing and in that case the process will become an orphan in this scenario some unix systems they will assign the first process in the system which is the init process the root process as the parent to the orphan processes we will discuss more on processes in later videos